So Shana, it's yeah. the uh, the first time we've been here, mm -hmm. um, and it's been a really lovely day. So here we are at um, Sazenkot House in the deepest English countryside in the Cotswolds. So what are your impressions? Juxtaposition of the Britishness, Englishness, and the Br and Indianness is probably the first thing I've seen like it. Apart from the pavilions in Brighton, as you were saying, it's the same architecture, isn't it? Um, yeah, I think it's strange, and I think it's almost a transportation back to that time, and it feels very colonial for me as a British Indian person as well. Um, yeah. You were saying about. Um you said something about um, it should be that everybody should make uh, everybody who's of Indian origin, yeah, Asian origin. Yeah, I think as a British Indian person, it should be like a rite of passage coming here. I didn't know it existed before you told me. Mm. So to come here and see like physical representations of the relationship between India and England, it reminded me of appropriation, extortion, all of those things, but also the beauty that Indian people clearly talk British people in a different way mm. like the garden that we're sitting in is based off Persian influences the garden we went to before That's right, had yeah. a lot of in Hindu um, <clears throat> gestural sculptures and stuff and I think the fact that the man that bought and owned this property came back to England and wanted to recreate a bit of India shows the impact that it had on him and hopefully other people as well and it isn't all just about extraction and extortion like I like to so what what would you say I mean in in the in the sense of kind of in the sense of construction of identities for mm -hmm. someone like you as who you are you are a Briton of Indian heritage uh, born and brought up here um, how does this fit in with that does this does this kind of assist does this help in that construction of identity I think it makes me feel like I have a piece of home here in a strange way. Mm. Coming and seeing a Hindu goddess in an English pond and Hindu cows and elephants over there. I think I've never felt like I belong to this country, but seeing the strong affiliations that India has with Britain, I have just as of a right to be here as this house does. And I think that's quite comforting to know that something like this is nestled in the countryside and India has had such a long-lasting impact and relationship with this country and that's why we're here today, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we, you and I, we drove, we drove to a place and we couldn't find our way there and we felt really scared and we joked with each other, we leave this place before somebody shoots us. And then coming here. And then coming here. So do you feel, do you, because you, you felt like that, you really yeah. felt threatened in that place, yeah, which I shan't name, yeah. which is also very historic, by the way. Uh, but here you feel, you felt pretty really tranquil, didn't you? Yeah, I think exploring the garden, seeing the garden, seeing the house, and 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 inside, obviously, I've just seen it's very traditional, and you can really see it. Yeah, tell me, tell me about, tell me about the contrast between the external and the internal. I think the external is a lot more sympathetic and appreciative of Indian culture than the inside is. There was, we went to the Shinwa's room, mm. and it was a lot of imported Chinese and Indian pieces of furniture and I think that was almost a novelty. There's a rickshaw parked to the front which yes. is a bit of a novelty which I don't and an think people are car. comfortable with. <laughs> but the outside I think it really has done justice to capturing that sense of India. And there's also an exoticism to it and yeah, it I think you have to take that on a pinch of salt. But the fact that somebody wanted to come back to England and recreate a piece of India just shows how important Indian architecture, Indian culture is globally as well as regionally I guess. So for your generation does a, does a place like this have, what does it do for your generation? Um, I think it's a springboard to educate people about colonial history as well as British Indian, a place for British Indian people to come and feel like they have a right to be on this land in this place because obviously as we know we're not always made to feel comfortable and in this country and as a British citizen. I've never really felt like I was British, but seeing the impact that India has had kind of reaffirms that to you that you're, I'm as much British as the English, but I'm also Indian and India has had 
as much of an impact, if not a greater impact, on culture and art than as English culture. So you can be bold, essentially what you're saying, yeah. and you should be bold, you should be allowed to be bold. Yeah, and I think this is a perfect example of British Indian that is in it, mm. because I don't know whether the man that works for the East India Company that lived here would have come back and saw himself as a British Indian or an Indian-British person. There's a cultural crossover, isn't there, and it's a perfect embodiment of that. Excellent. Thank you very much, Anna. Thank, Thank you for you. your views. Thank you.